Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to answer the question, what math do you need for data science? And this is extremely challenging, just like it is for quant finance, because the question really is, how deep do you wanna go? Um, what do you consider a data scientist, which I'll tell you here in a second, and that all determines how much math you need, what math you need, and the truth is you can never have enough math. So I'm just gonna define data scientist as someone who builds models. Um, as many of you know, I define quant as somebody who builds models as well using math, stats, computer science. Uh, data science, it's, I don't know, you can call it a field. I don't think it's really a field here, but it has machine learning, it has some AI in it. That's just math and stats. Uh, machine learning is just a very, very small subset of statistics as well. Uh, you have econometrics like don't limit yourself on the tool set that you're going to need here because you're going to go into the business world, whether it's tech or finance or banking or manufacturing or, I don't know, marketing or whatever. You need to be able to build models. You don't need to limit your tool set to, I only use these sets of tools here. So before I get going too far into this, those that build models need to have enough rigor and understanding of a broad conceptual soundness of modeling, including the math, the data, and all that. So kind of the general areas is going to be, I'm gonna say traditional mathematics. So you're going to need things like linear algebra. Um, you're also going to need probability theory, and you're also going to need statistics, which are kind of all pieces within itself here. I'm gonna link a video as well above or below here. It is what math courses you need to be well prepared for a quantitative finance master's or PhD. Um, so these are the undergrad courses you should have in mathematics. These are all the same courses I think you're gonna need for data science. Uh, but let me run through a few books here with you guys and explain a little bit about why you need them, perhaps some areas that I find a little bit more interesting than others. Uh, let's just dive on in here though. So first off is linear algebra. So I love this book here. This is uh, Linear Algebra and its Applications uh, by Gilbert Strang. He goes by Gil Strang. Um, so linear algebra is not just generic algebra. If you guys remember like in high school, you did like the matrices and there's like some multiplication and division and all that. Uh, when you do neural networks, for example, and you're doing forward and backward propagation, uh, you're going to be doing operations with matrices. Now, the reason you're gonna be doing that is because uh, you have a, you have a neural network, right? And you have neurons which make up a layer, you have multiple layers. And when you go to do more or less activation functions going forward in a forward feed, uh, you're gonna have biases which are intercepts and then you're gonna have the actual equation pieces, so the driving variables that are coming from the layer before it. Uh, again, when these things start to get large, uh, there are lots of equations and they have to cross and multiply and it gets quite confusing. Uh, when you use linear algebra, you can put them into nice, pretty uh, matrices and then you can just write things like, you know, <laughs> matrices B plus uh, A times X uh, gives us, you know, layer two or layer one or whatnot here. So linear algebra, I can't emphasize enough. This is used also in, um, linear regression. So you can view linear regression through the eyes of linear algebra. Uh, one reason I love Gil Strang's book is because you can actually go on to YouTube and I'll link it below as well. Uh, he has an open course from MIT. He's a professor there for many, many, many years. Uh, really fascinating individual. He teaches it very well. Um, but you can learn all this for free if you really wanted to. Um, and again, I bought the book because I'm a textbook nerd and I love textbooks. So um, anyways, I think the book's great. It has great examples in here and you will see it has great applications uh, across machine learning, data science, statistics, as many other areas as well. All right, another area or another textbook I like, which is gonna probably surprise most of you, uh, is Mathematics for Economists. Um, this one's by Simon and Bloom here. It is an old crusty book. Um, I mean, even the tag on the back, you can't even see. Um, the writing on it anymore, it's all worn off. I had this book in grad school for an applied economics masters. There are things in here like optimization, for example. I think this book does a really good job as an introductory book covering things a little bit at a time and a little bit of everything that you might need. Again, optimizations in here, there's some linear algebra in here. So <laughs> I opened it up, right? You know, you guys can't see. Uh, but this is actually uh, algebra of square matrices. And then it goes into like optimization functions and you know, all kinds of things that would be interesting inside of uh, machine learning applications. So as an, an example here, there's Euclidean spaces, uh, linear independence, limits, open sets. So this is calculus for several variables. Of course, matrix algebra, uh, functions of several variables, calculus of several variables, 
Um, there's a whole section, which is part four on optimization here. So like quadratic form and defined matrices, um, unconstrained optimization, constrained optimization one. Anyways, I'm not going to bore you with this. These things are what we use uh, in machine learning as well, because you can think about um, optimization problems, which is more or less what machine learning is going to be doing. Uh, so even like in the neural network framework, again, I don't know, I've got neural nets on the, on the brain here tonight, but uh, neural networks are going to be doing things like optimizing the gradient. So gradient descent is where you're actually looking to minimize some sort of function. As you'll know, when you learn through mathematics, there's no way to find the absolute global minimum. If we could, uh, we could find a model that fits better than any other model, absolutely, but we cannot. And so you need to learn um, some calculus to go through that. Uh, and on that other list of books to that video I mentioned for quants, uh, ODE's Ordinary Differential Equations on there. So this is a first course in differential equations. This one's by Logan. Um, I've been slowly working through this book. I don't have a lot to say about it yet. Um, I like the writing style though. I think it's fairly simple and straightforward. But again, if you're going to be doing optimization of any sorts here, knowing calculus is going to help you find uh, these sorts of points here. So it is useful in that stance. And the other books that I just love, and I'm going to talk a little bit about here from a different perspective, I guess, um, measure theory and probability theory. So I've been working through this book. I've actually enjoyed it quite well. It's by Athreya and Lahiri. Um, measure theory in itself is about measuring things like space uh, and even numbers. So you think about like lines, like linear regression or linear algebra, right? Measuring some sort of line, some distance. Uh, then you get into like two-dimensional space, which is like measuring areas. So you can think of like probabilities. Um, so you do like AUC, like area under the curve, for example. Um, that's a form of, you know, measuring areas here. And again, you'll use AUC, for example, like in logistic regression, um, and looking at fit, so separation of categorical models here. Um, but probability theory and measure theory in itself are the sole foundation, the course I think most students are missing. So if you're going to take a course um, or a book, this one I think is actually very hard to grasp and understand as a theory. I think measure theory and probability theory seem fairly straightforward. And I'm hopefully going to do a few videos here soon on constraints and probability spaces with decision trees versus linear regression, the strengths and weaknesses, and these sort of things that I consider in the industry when I'm building out models, because knowing these so-called boring topics here, right, uh, thinking about constraints and boundary conditions uh, will actually help guide you into what is a correct model and what is an incorrect model. Uh, and to give you some perspective on this, uh, we had someone I interacted with in a business setting selling a product uh, that essentially was garbage because it didn't operate within the proper probability spaces. And so when you operate and measure and build models in the wrong probability space, um, you end up with an incorrect prediction or incorrect model. It is invalid in many instances. So it will fit uh, in very specific conditions. But as soon as you hit the real world, I can tell you it will blow up without even using it. Uh, I also fell into this trap a little while ago, building a complex model system with a bunch of different models and parts and probability theory being baked all in together. And I created what I thought was a great case. It turned out to be a very specialized use case. Uh, and then as people complained that it needed to do all these other things and tools, I'm like pulling my hair out. And it clicked, just hit me uh, one night when I was in bed, actually, I jumped out and drew out a bunch of pictures and diagrams because you can visualize probability space. Uh, but probabilities, I was measuring the wrong space. I had to generalize the concept and I was able to mathematically define that as a general form, which again, makes it easier to explain to other people to get buy-in from the business side, which is a whole thing in itself. Um, but probability spaces and measure theory are very, I would say, underrated. There are things that are critical in doing machine learning as well as other types of modeling. In the last book that I'm going to pitch to you guys here on kind of the fundamental core topics here that I would study and look at um, for machine learning is going to be a book on proofs. Yes, on proofs. Um, this is a long form mathematical text by Jay Cummings. Um, this book is very, very cheap because Jay Cummings, if you go on Amazon and read his little bio, he does not believe in charging a lot of money for textbooks. Um, I was skeptical. I thought it would be a very thin book. It is quite thick. Um, this book alone is like f almost 500 pages here. Um, again, if you start to look through these sorts of books here, maybe I'll put some pictures on the screen. Um, it's all about like logic and reasoning and working through things mathematically to prove something out. Um, this is critical when you're trying to argue 
or debate or create some sort of modeling piece or structure or even just simple analytics and saying, I believe this will occur this way or this is how this works. And then being able to go through and look at things from a proof perspective, like can you find a counter argument? Like can you find one case where it does fail, right? If you find a, an example of where it fails, right, your, your theory is dead. It does not exist. So then you have to redefine it. Maybe it only works in specific constraints like we talked about here with that probability theory and measure theory. But proofs is the one class I didn't take. I guess one of many classes I didn't take. I, I was not a math major. Uh, but it's one of those courses I wish I would have taken. I, I find that book very interesting as I'm reading through it and doing the examples. And I'm like, of course, of course, this is how this works, right? As Jay Cummings is explaining it and like writing it all out and doing the examples. Um, proofs are critical. They help you understand how things actually work. You'll find out that I think proofs is more critical than most other textbooks in the sense that uh, you can pick up other textbooks and you can find papers and you can read through them. And it helps you think about uh, one, how does how do these things work? How do the mechanics behind the modeling processes, the data cleaning, the readjustments and all kinds of math and stuff, how do these work? Like, how do we get the model to function? It also helps you find out when your model just doesn't work or it's failing and like you build it and it fails and you rebuild it and it fails again. And I find a lot of the machine learning and data science community then goes, oh, that's just how it works, right? We just keep rebuilding all these things. Um, but if you understand proofs and math a little bit better, you can actually dive in and figure out like, okay, I actually have the wrong model type here. And yes, it fits very well in practice. Um, but when we start to actually fit these, like you're out of time or your testing data, as you call it, machine learning data science realm is not performing very well. Uh, it looks like it performs well on paper. So your uh, training set and your uh, testing set have good stability. And then you put it into practice, it fails. Um, a lot of this comes down to probability space being the wrong specified structure that you're pulling from. Um, a whole other topic here. Um, but having proofs helps you to kind of analyze and think about these sorts of problems here. So having all those foundational principles of math stuff, I know, I know many people are like, I don't want to be a mathematician. It's very boring. And I can just code most of this. Um, it will help you with other books that are specific to machine learning. So I'm going to give a few shout outs here on books. Uh, there's an introduction to statistical learning with applications in R. There's also a new one in Python. Um, again, this is by uh, James Witten, Hasty, and Tim Sharani. Tim Sharani. Uh, anyway, this book is free online. Uh, I will put a link below as well to my website because I have a bunch of other free textbooks, including I think a deep learning one, which I think is absolutely excellent, very rigorous, uh, well put together and explained quite simply, I think that most of you will get. Um, but this book, again, when you start to go through a lot of this and they kind of throw on the on the page here, a few equations and just kind of like wave their hands and keep going. I feel like in many instances, it's great for learning just the machine learning aspect. But I think in many cases, if you have all those other prerequisites, it'll be much, much easier to understand what the equation represents and how to take it apart. And also on that same kind of topic here, uh, there's another book, Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning uh, by Bishop here. This is a very, very popular textbook. At least it was in 20... Man, 2012, 2014, somewhere around there, uh, with many machine learning programs. This book is much more mathematical than many uh, machine learning and data science books I have found. Again, it's not a math book, but there are definitely some math sections where it's really starting to go through. Um, like, here's an example uh, in variational linear regression, uh, discussing lower bounds. Um, again, I'll try to put these sort of topics here. Um, on the screen, but these sorts of things that look scary when you haven't taken a lot of math aren't really as complicated as they look. It's just trying to unpack it and get that mathematical foundation to kind of get going here. You'll find there's a lot of stuff in machine learning like that where you can just go, it's just, it's just too complicated and then just figure out how to do it inside of Python. Um, but then you're not going to make very good decisions on your model development and kind of what you should and shouldn't be using because you're not understanding the mathematics and the strengths and weaknesses of each sort of method here. And then to top this video off here with a few interesting topics that I just, I love and things that I think are challenging as well. Um, stochastic processes here. So this is an introduction to stochastic processes with R uh, by Dobro, Dobro. I don't know how you pronounce that, but this book I really enjoyed as well. Um, Markov chains are part of this book, for example. Uh, Markov chains are absolutely amazing. You can do great predictions and analytics with them. Uh, putting it together systems, for example, and looking at the probabilities of switching between different states. Anyways, this book is really interesting as well. This is a, again, kind of like a stats book, kind of like a math book. Um, it has good visualizations. 
Um, it has just a lot of interesting problems and in how you use them. Again, there's Monte Carlo estimation in here and all kinds of discussions around mathematics and mathematical theories like stationarity, which is what I do a lot of for time series. So if you really want to understand time series modeling, um, again, understand the foundation. So like doing an LSTM model, which is like the machine learning data science version of ARIMA, um, you can use this theory, this design, and start to think about how these things get put together. Again, Markov chains and Markov processes and Monte Carlo simulations and all that will all play into your tool belt of tools that you're going to need. And then if you want to really go ham on your mathematics here, which is the area that I really find interesting, but it is a little above my intellectual grade here. It's going to be Stochastic Calculus. Uh, this is a book, Introduction to Stochastic Calculus with Applications uh, by FEMA, Klebanair, Klebanar. Um, I've done a book review on this one as well. I enjoyed the book. I've took Stochastic Calculus, at least an introductory course in graduate school. Uh, it's an interesting field, interesting area. Uh, again, you're not gonna really need that in most applications for machine learning. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, right, how far you wanna go in your math journey is really up to you. But I would highly recommend that other video I did on math courses for undergrads because those courses are gonna be foundational for understanding all the majority of machine learning. If you wanna start getting super specialized into different areas of like stochastic processes, um, that's something you should do like, you know, af definitely after undergrad, perhaps in graduate school to get a really good introduction to it, and then you can kind of spend more time learning that way. So anyways, that's what I would focus on again is the basic traditional math. It's gonna be, you know, calculus like Calc 1, Calc 2, maybe Calc 3 if you're feeling like it, ODEs, PDEs, uh, linear algebra, some proofs, some measure theory, and some probability. I think those are kind of the core foundations you're going to need. There are some other things you could do, um, but just focusing on those are gonna kind of get you to that base foundation uh, to be quite competent as a data scientist or machine learning engineer. So anyways, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time.